Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of the Three Way Podcast, Linkster 101. That's Public Enemy 59. What's up? Uh, JP Blows here to discuss another week of topics. Topics, topics, topics. So let's just get right into it. Uh, what we know so far right now about Netflix is that, which is nothing really brand new, The Punisher and Jessica Jones have been canceled indefinitely. Uh, which kind of sucks because I really did like the Punisher franchise, the new one. It was a lot more gory, uh, a little bit more closer to home to to the actual comic book character. But they decided to go a different route, and that route is to shut that shit down and not ever put it on <laughs> on the TV show again. Uh, right, yeah, okay. and Jessica Jones. Uh, I, the first one was okay. It was a little too much talking. The second one was not good. Uh, but you know that. Hopefully, they did say something that they might let Jessica Jones uh, pop up. Because um, since Daredevil's going to come back, uh, they might let her pop up there. So, we'll see R. what R. happens R. there. All right. Uh, yeah. So, that's over. I hope <clears throat> Jessica, you know, very attractive woman. I hope she finds a good job. Um, yeah, she was on, a, um, what's that? A super Bad? No, was it Super That face, though. That, like. Uh, Breaking Bad. There you uh, go. That uh, face. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to save people's lives. Like, you know. After so many episodes, it just gets on. Did you even see one episode? I saw this, and I looked. Okay, so you didn't watch so, the show. I saw that. All right. Moving forward, so some saying event, I uh, had an event where they announced that they were teaming up with Google, and apparently... No, I was kidding. Ready? Oh, my God. See, this is the reason why, because <laughs> I don't know nothing. I didn't watch Daddy. that. Anymore. I'm going based um, on So I just saw that they came out with a foldable phone. Looks pretty cool. For two thousand dollars, two K. Um, pretty cool. I saw the the them messing with it. I mean, it folds. It basically has a screen on the outside. If if it's folded, and once you open it, the inside is a screen. So it's like a little tablet. Um, it's looks pretty cool. But man, two thousand dollars. Like I don't know, man. I mean, but some of you guys, I mean, spend a thousand on. Like yeah, an iPhone, so a thousand, but two thousand that's a lot. But it's coming out this year, it's coming out in April, I believe, something like that. Soon, so who knows? I got my you know tax returns coming, might as well just spend it all on one phone. Why not? Uh, so yeah. then, yeah, uh, moving forward, uh, we got uh, some announcement with uh, WW, is it still F? WWE, W, oh. Well, I mean, but didn't it used to be WWF? Yeah, yes. They got sued. Yeah, but I mean, because Hulk Hogan... Okay, so basically there's going to be a biopic of Hulk Hogan in the WWF um, when it first came out in the Royal Rumble. And guess who's playing it? Which I think is a very good casting. Chris Hinsworth. Thor! You think? I think it's a very good uh, choice. I think it's super weird. I think that's badass. Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan, a biopic. It's like a... I don't know. Chris Hemsworth, isn't he Australian or something? So, English? Okay, it's called acting. acting. It's just very weird to me. I think it's a very good choice, a very good pick. Uh, a lot of people don't remember that Hulk Hogan was fucking huge in the 80s. Like, really, really huge. And early 90s, too, especially when uh, he went to, because uh, it was WWF or WWE, whatever you want to call it. And then it was Nitro, uh, which was WCW. And uh, Hulk Hogan was was a big part no of that, cares. big part of that push. So he's had a lot of of you know uh, power back in the days. And back in the day, it'd be interesting just to see exactly you know how how all that came about. Especially the whole um, uh, what's that big event that they have WrestleMania? Uh, that that'll be exciting to to know a little bit more details about that a little bit more. I I, I would go watch it. Hulk I mean, Hogan is a racist. I don't need to watch this. Uh, I mean, I'll still go watch it. Uh, I don't really think he's a racist, but I mean, what is? Whatever. It is what it is. Uh, and also, something else. Speaking of Netflix, too, Netflix has been coming out with a lot of movies recently, and I guess they're just trying to pitch all this, all these ideas out, see which one comes out. But they're doing a Motley Crew biopic as well, uh, which I saw the trailer. It looks interesting. A lot of unknowns. All the actors are unknowns. I, I don't. I mean, I don't care about Motley Crew. I mean, I, I I like rock and roll. Um, and Motley Crew. I'm not gonna say they're they're my favorite band, but they have a lot. They have a you know, Doctor Feel Good. It's, it's one of their major hits. They're not Queen. And uh, uh, yeah, they're not Queen. But 
I mean, Queen is freaking legendary. But I, I, I would put them in Have the second Have you seen Bohemian tier. Rhapsody? Of, duh, I was one of the first ones to go see it. What do you think? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking no, about... No, but what do you think about Bohemian Rhapsody? It was a good movie. That's what I thought. I was right. Well, I'm, I'm going to probably watch it just to see how it is. Molly Crew, as I said before, uh, um, they're really, really good. Uh, their drummer was the one that was banging Pamela Anderson. They came out in that porn video. That's... Uh, Tommy Lee. Uh, and then uh, see, no one would know Tommy Lee if not for banging Pamela Anderson. I, Pamela Anderson knew him. She gave him. She gave it to him. So yeah, but that's Pam Anderson. Did Who you cares did about you Pam get Anderson? someone close to that looks like Pam Anderson back in the oh, Tommy Lee, okay. Molly Cruz, just not okay. Well, I'm mean, I'm excited for it. I'll probably watch it. Netflix need to uh, step it up. Yeah, because they, they, they be doing it. They were trying. They've been trying to do anything. You know, they're they're taking loans because they can't. They're just not making enough for all the shit they're making. They make they make too much too much content. I think what they're trying to do they, 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 too much. And then they they once in a while they get a big hit, but. Look, these I guys, think what they're these trying guys to are do, over here taking loans. That's what I'm telling you. They're trying to find that one movie hit. They've so already found them. No, no. Shit load of time. No. Stop making so much shit. No, dude. I mean, they're, they're bringing out content. People are watching their content. People are still paying money. Bird Box. Bird, uh, and Bird Box to me was trash. Bird Box what? to me was trash. But I, everybody watched it. Everybody watched it. I mean. Terrace I, House. See. Uh, ter- oh, Terrace House. That's, that's my. Kachan. I mean, uh, uh, my, my Ninja Takachan. Uh, <laughs> he's legit. That's my fool right there. And he got with that pretty ass girl. But that's. Anyways, point is. Netflix has been trying to, to, to get that latch into that movie business, and hopefully they do. The biopic is another step forward. Maybe they can start doing other biopics. You know, there are a lot of other uh, agencies. Yeah, that, that maybe the next time they'll do a good band. <clears throat> oh, my God, dude. You don't know nothing about rock and roll, man. Anyway, moving forward, something else that happened over the week, um, which I found to be hilarious, because I didn't even know what happened. I woke up one morning, and on Twitter, uh, there's people like, Oh, uh, like memes on Jordan getting kicked out of Kylie Jenner's house. I don't even know who Jordan was. Apparently, that was Kylie's best friend. And she got caught menacing around with Tristan Thompson uh, behind Kourtney Kardashian's back. And this is like, what, the second, third time he's been caught cheating, I think? I don't know, man. Kourtney needs to stop messing with these basketball players. I mean, but that's what she likes. Well, then that's I mean, what she, she had gets. Lamar. Then she shouldn't be surprised. She had Lamar Odom. Uh, and then she has this good old Lamar, and she dated James Harden, so she likes basketball. Yeah, but that players. was like a DL thing. See, James Harden played a badass. Like he wasn't on no show. He wasn't like, oh yeah, we're dating. Nah, it was just like a probably a couple of nights kind of thing, and that they they split up amicably, and bro, he he got it in. He bro, he did what he he was supposed he to took do. Her to Chipotle in Houston, bro. True. If you take a girl to Chipotle, exactly. In Houston, That's how much. He didn't give a shit. He took her to Chipotle. He did, <laughs> hey, he didn't take her to Freebirds. He took her to Chipotle. Nah, if he would have taken her to fucking Five Guys, then I would have been like, oh shit, this shit's serious. Five Guys? Yeah, Five Guys is legit. Nah. Fuck Whataburger. Nah. <laughs> when it comes to Fuddruckers and Five Guys, hey, <laughs> hey, <laughs> somebody hit this fool. Um, Bro. In and out cell. Five Guys, man. We, we should do a hump day show just on, on best fast food. It's man. Wednesday. It's coming. Uh, we might just do that. <laughs> anyway, moving forward. Um, so that's that's mostly what happened in pop. Anything else you want to mention? Nothing at all. I mean, it was it was pretty <laughs> a, a slow week this week for pop. <clears throat> um, but, you know, hopefully next week it'll be more tight packed. Uh, so moving forward, we got sports. Space swords. Uh, Los talking baseball. There you go. Manny Machado finally <clears throat> got signed uh, by the San Diego Padres. Who the – who? I mean, don't get me wrong. San Diego is a beautiful city. So this guy got paid uh, – got a contract for 10 years, $300 million. Uh, makes him the highest paid uh, MLB player of all time. Uh Going to San Diego. So not only does he get $300 million, he gets to live in San Diego uh, for a living uh, and plays baseball, uh, you know, for half a year. Um, finally, he picked a spot. Uh, now it looks like the Phillies are uh, putting their targets on Bryce Harper. I'm hoping Bryce doesn't go to the Phillies, but whatever. I'm hoping something more exciting happens. But, man, uh, the Yankees were trying really hard for Manny Machado um, it just seems that Manny just, who, for, for what reasons, I don't know, just 
Didn't want to be in that New York uh, spotlight. His wife. Is it the media? But see, San Diego, you're going to see a lot more thoughts in San Diego instead of New York. I mean, that's my opinion. I, I mean, I've never been to San Diego. The so sunny San Diego, bikinis, whatever. Maybe that's why he chose it. As far as I know, the man is single. So, yeah, San Diego would seem like a pretty cool spot to be at with 300 mil. Uh, but, yeah, man, uh, changes the landscape uh, right with his signing. Uh, San Diego is now, uh, like, you know, competitors. Uh, in the league, um, now it's where everybody's just kind of waiting to see where Bryce Harper is, is going to go. Uh, Marwin um, from, you know, former Astro, uh, Marwin Gonzalez uh, went ahead and signed uh, with the Minnesota Twins. Um, two years. Uh, yeah, pretty good contract. Uh, it's a shame. He's a, you know, five-tool player, could play. Basically every position in the outfield, uh, in the infield, except for catcher, uh, can play almost every position. He's a consistent hitter, a good, a good uh, person to have in the clubhouse. Uh, fortunately, not coming to the Houston Astros, not signing back with them, uh, will be going to Minnesota. Minnesota. I mean, I guess they were just the ones who offered him the most money because I don't know who the hell wants to go play in Minnesota. But yeah, hey, man, the, the best, the best to you, Marwin. Uh, you know, thank you for everything you've done for the Houston Astros, uh, for bringing uh, them a championship, uh, and everything you've done for the city of Houston. Uh, we wish you the best. Uh, but yeah, that's all I got for MLB. What about Keiko? He's still not signed. Yeah, signed. yeah, he's still not signed. We're still waiting for him to make a decision, <laughs> just like Bryce Harper. Uh, Keiko, I mean, there's still rumors that. Talk, you know, rumbles, rumblings that he still might come back to Houston, but it's a long shot. As you can see with Marvin Gonzalez, he had it set here. Uh, but when people offer bigger contracts, I mean, what are you gonna do? You're I gonna mean, take the money. Yeah, that's you, what gotta you gotta look gotta out do. for your family. Hey, man, I don't, I don't, I don't blame any of them. So, uh, uh, even though yeah, we'll baseball baseball players get paid a lot more than basketball uh, basketball players and and uh, football players, right? Yes, they, I think they do get paid a lot more. From what I know, but there's no cap. Uh, there's no salary cap in baseball, so these owners can basically spend as much, as much as money they, as they want, as they like. So they can pre pretty much buy a championship, is what you're saying. Which is what you know. A lot of years, New York and um, Boston has done, but the rest of the league has caught up. So it's not as easy for New York and Boston to just buy a, a superstar team, because all these other teams are stepping up to the plate. So. Uh, you're not seeing these dynasties any longer because uh, the league is much more competitive, which makes it much more entertaining to watch, especially come playoff time. Uh, I don't know about entertaining. That's just boring as fuck. But hey, people like it. People, I haven't really yeah, heard much. I mean, if you, I haven't really heard much of. It's not like games, you know, Golden State winning every year, which yeah, is like so much. That fun. sucks too. But I mean, the playoffs are always no, fun you're in right. the NBA. You're right. All right, so that was Los and baseball. You should put like something like right here, like a picture. Like, I don't know, like Los with the whole baseball thing. Because really, really, he's the only, like he's the only one. That I wouldn't mind Los, yeah. Hart, and, a, and the and baseball emoji. Yeah. Emoji. And the Astros on it because he's a, he's a fanboy. Nah, you don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving forward. So something else that happened over the, uh, over the well, I guess I would say last weekend was the NBA All-Star. Uh, or was it two weeks ago? I'm not really sure. I think it was last week. It was last week. It was last week. Uh, so, yeah, uh, All-Star was pretty boring. Uh, I think the best highlight was essentially the the dunk that... Um, I don't even know this guy's name. He's from OKC. He dunked over Shaq. And that was like the best uh, dunk. He the won slam the, dunk the slam dunk contest. Uh, everything else was pretty much boring outside of J. Cole's performance in the halftime uh, show. Uh, I really don't have much to say about that. But what has happened, which happened yesterday... Well, All-Star Game was pretty good. You think uh, so? A lot, of, a lot of highlights coming out of the All-Star Game. The bounce pass from Steph Curry to oh, Gia uh, Giannis. They, play, they don't uh, even play defense. The, 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 it's, they play it's no entertaining defense. To watch. They just run up and down the court. Uh, the, They're just the trying not to get The assist to LeBron James off the backboard. Um, it was pretty entertaining. Yeah, I mean... But it's no MLB All-Star game, but whatever. Man, man, oh, my God, dude. Look, every – Pro Bowl for the NFL sucks. Uh, All-Star game, the All-Star actual game sucks ass. MLB, no one watches it. 
I mean, really, really no one watches it. Uh, their ratings are so low. Uh, but I don't really understand the whole thing of the whole sports thing. I really don't. But, I mean, people like watching it. I like the, I did like the slam dunk contest. It was entertaining. Outside of that, nah. But anyway, so what happened on Thursday as well. So NBA started once again. And, of course, uh, primetime was... The L.A. Lakers and Houston Rockets. So a little bit of issue there simply because of the fact we already know that Ray John Rondo spit on Chris Paul. There's a little history going back and forth. Blah, blah, blah. The game is played. Well, there is a referee there called, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Elias Scott? Uh, Scott Laurel? Or what's his name? Scott Laurel. Something like that. It's Scott in it. Anyway, so James Harden, I guess, I took it really personal. I guess they have a history back and forth. And apparently... Out of uh, every time this referee has uh, been in a game, he had we have lost in the playoffs three straight times. And apparently, according to Chris Paul, has had a history with this referee as well. They've gone back and forth. They even went to meetings. Scott Foster. Scott Foster. There you go. Scott Foster. They've even gone to meetings, and Scott Foster don't give a fuck. He doesn't like them bitching. Uh, he did not give Harden the calls during the L.A. game. Even though the Rockets had a 19-point uh, lead, which they shouldn't have never given up. They would stop chunking up threes like fucking morons, maybe then. But <clears throat> they gave the game away, and they were pissed. All the way up to the end of the game, uh, James Harden's going off. He gets uh, uh, six fouls. He's out of the game. Chris Paul's over here screaming at the ref like, tech me, tech me, give me another one. It was just bad all around. Uh, they try to put it on this referee. I don't. I think the referee. It's it's tough being a referee in the NBA. Uh, I think that there's a lot of a lot of players that bitch way too fucking much. Um, and I, I I I'm a Houston fanboy. I love the Houston Rockets, but they shot too many threes, and they try to pretend like this referee was the one that caused him for missing all those fucking threes wide open. No, it wasn't his fault. Uh, he did his job. All the calls that he did, I didn't see any call that he did that was incorrect. No, Maybe there no. was a couple. Where Ray John Rondo kind of like acted, but Ray John Rondo's the, done for that. There was like an offensive foul that LeBron got. Obviously, he flopped. Um, I mean, but and flops LeBron are didn't by, even hit him hard. Like, but flops are, are part of the game in basketball. Unfortunately, Ginobili contact is a part Ginobili of the game. Ginobili started that. Um, That's why I don't watch it. NBA. I mean, it, it's it's just it, it's part of the game now. Um, and Ray John Rondo. Uh, is one of those little bitches that does that. Um, he's always been known to do that. And he doesn't really play much offense, so he has to do, cope something defensively. So that's what he does. But anyways, that's what pretty much what happened in the NBA. Uh, right now, another thing that's just occurring is Anthony Davis is still pissed off and bitching and moaning and complaining, uh, which I don't really know why. It's like, dude, you still have you signed that contract. You signed that contract. Anyway, um, they're going to trade him in the summer. They got rid of the GM uh, for the Pelicans since he did not choose to do that uh that trade with uh with the lakers with magic johnson and magic johnson's a little bitch man he been coming out like oh you know if they didn't want to do it like shut the hell up bro that's why you get fined you're like the general manager of the lakers shut up shut Who up cares? they got money let him get fined i mean he, yeah he you show right about that but still you don't want to have they the lakers already have a bad rep trying to steal players away and and meddle when they shouldn't be meddling. So, I mean, uh, you know, it is what it is. I, I, I personally don't find anything wrong with it. I feel like Anthony Davis should stay another year in New Orleans. Uh, but he doesn't want to play. He's leaving the stadium. He's not even giving his all. Uh, get rid of him. But, yeah, so that's pretty much what's happening in the NBA right now. But let's get to the big topic. This is what I wanted to get to. I wanted to talk about horny old men. Horny old men. Yes, sir. So, uh, over the week... Uh, I think it was yesterday, matter of fact. Was it Friday? Yeah, it was Friday. Yes, it was Friday. So this old man who owns a team in the NFL went to go get a hand job at a... Was it a nail salon? I believe it was a nail salon. All right, apparently he had been going there several times to get hand jobs or whatever the hell he was. Well, he got caught. And that man's name was Robert Kraft. So, the great Robert Kraft. So the Robert Kraft, not only did he get caught cheating. Six-time champion Robert Kraft. Not only did he get, get caught cheating in the NFL, he got caught cheating outside the NFL. So cheaters will be he's cheaters. He's not cheating. His wife is dead. Yeah, but he's married, remarried, dumbass. He's never married. Yes, he is. What are you talking about? He has a young wife. Is he remarried? We're, we're, getting, we're getting that checked right now. He is married. He has a young wife. I've seen him with that young wife. She has blonde hair. She's younger than him. Yeah, continue. I want to listen. Oh. <laughs> Los is like, he's not a cheater. He, they never cheat. Yes, they cheat. Cheating's in their blood. Can't stop a cheater from being cheating. He is 
married. There you go, dumbass. Shut the hell up. So anyway, he was only not only cheating in the NFL, but cheating in real life. He got caught, and apparently, um, because he basically got. Well, I mean, if she's not gonna satisfy him, he's gonna oh find someone god, to satisfy him. You really gotta be shit. I'm just saying. Oh my god, his <laughs> wife is young and hot. Well, like, she's obviously not getting the job done. Yeah, well, I, don't know. I, so I can't there. blame my man Robert Kraft. You know what I mean? I don't know, but Robert Kraft over here in his old age just fucking on up. If she want to leave, she can leave. And his wife died. His original wife died. She did. And, and God uh, bless her soul. Maybe that's maybe that's what fucked them you up. You know, yeah, man. I mean, when the love of your life leaves like that, you know, you try to replace her, but no one's gonna replace that first love. So you try to search for it other, uh, somewhere else. I mean, I kind of don't. Because that play. person, that, no, I'm going to give you some, some life advice here. We don't want to um, hear it. Because <laughs> that person can't, you know, can fulfill. So you, you, what else choice do you have? You find multiple women to try to fulfill that, that urge, mm -hmm. you know, that need. Mm -hmm. And he's doing what any of us would have done, uh, which is, uh, you know, pay a couple hundred dollars to let this woman... Uh, fornicate with us. Okay. Any of us would have done Anyway, that. Lowe's is just a fanboy of the Patriots. He's just trying to cover it's that okay. up. That I old mean, man was trying gonna, to get a hand job. He's going to get a slap on the wrist. Trying to get his little dick hard. Thanks it to, didn't work. He got caught, and he got charged for soliciting a prostitution. Well, thanks to our judicial system, he's going to be locked know, up. In let jail. go with a slap on his wrist. Probably. Don't do it again, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Kraft. Mr. Kraft, don't, don't do, do it again, again Mr. Kraft. Uh, I, I see this. Uh, <laughs> Mr. As, Kraft. Please. I see this as interesting uh, in the NFL because apparently, according what? to the rules of the NFL, uh, they, get, they get to get hit hard. Uh, players get hit hard. Players. No. Ain't shit happening to the Patriots. They so do. The, 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 the owners, the, those higher ups, they don't want football to him. Ain't nothing happening to the Patriots. Because no, the, the, the Coke guy, what's his name? Uh, Ursa, yeah, yeah. Ursa, he, he got, got us. 500,000. 500, That's it? That's for drinking. That's mm -hmm. it? That's for being caught drunk, bro. Yeah, but for Mr. getting a hand job, getting was just, a hand job from a chinita just, at the nail salon. First off, I want to know where exactly was this nail salon K? at. Slap crap with 500K. Because I understand if you get caught. Ain't no thing. If you get caught trying to get a hand job, it better be from a fine ass bitch. He made that. If it's some ugly ass from the fucking ghetto ass. Crap uh, made, made 500K off the Super Bowl itself just one day, one game. That's what I'm saying. So. He so better get at the guy with one. With he a better fine. be a, better be like a. It fine ain't no ass. thing. But you know what? They came out and said he's not the only one. They got caught other people. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was a sting, but not all of them were owners. He was the biggest, the highest profile. Name I was in hoping there. Jerry Jones would be caught up in there, because Jerry Jones has a little history. A little bitch has Jerry Jones. Long live Jerry Jones, man. Fucking up the Cowboys left and right. Appreciate that. Uh, but yeah, America's so, America's owner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I we just, love you, Robert Kraft. Uh, I, uh, we support you 100% here at the Three Way Podcast. We I hope mean, that, that is, we hope that we, we send thoughts and prayers to you and your family. You can literally go all over the thoughts world and, and find yourself a fine ass prostitute. He did, but you went to a little nail salon. He, he found where, himself where, all he I, needed. I'm just saying. Oh, it could have been Hispanics too. There's some Hispanic nail salons. There's some Hispanic nail salons, right? Nah. Yeah, I've seen him in the hood. I just want to know if he went to the hood or he went to the upper class. He went to the upper class, man. That's Mr. Robert Kraft, the greatest owner of all time. <laughs> Six-time champion. He went, he went to go get an upper class Six-time champion. Yeah, the good <laughs> shit. And we support you 100%, Mr. Kraft. Bro. Thoughts like, and prayers to you and your like, family. I don't think... I don't and, your, think and, your, and your wife. I think they're not going to really hit him that hard. I really don't. Of course not. Um, it's Robert Kraft. But I think it just looks... It's a bad PR move. He'll How's go that? straight to the... Uh, what is it? The Alliance League if he has to if the NFL tries any shit. He's taking the Patriots with him. I wonder if he took Say Tom, what's up. I wonder if he took Tom Brady to that Nelson Lawn. Take Lawrence. him right to the Alliance League. All, <laughs> uh, you know, win championships in the Alliance League. It's all By good. the way, shout out to the Alliance League for bringing back hard-hitting football, man. God damn. Uh, I, I really am enjoying watching the clips. I haven't really watched the full game. Uh, have you watched the full game? You know, game? they almost ran out of money in the, after the first uh, week. But uh, they they got an investor to invest. What was it? Two hundred mil? I don't know. They couldn't play, pay the players. Yeah, they they didn't couldn't pay the players and the coaches. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I like how the the they, they started this whole thing where like how they check uh the flags when you throw a red flag. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, I like that. Uh, I like how they, they call the plays. I like how they break it down on the TV. I find it interesting. Maybe it'll bring some ideas to the NFL. They, they have a lot of old, uh, you know, NFL coaches, yeah. players coaching and running the teams. It's pretty interesting. I, I mean, I find it interesting. I now. mean, hey, NFL, you really want to you want to fuck with Robert Kraft? Watch him make the Alliance League the biggest in, uh, <laughs> football league in, in the United States. Send him so he can give everybody hand jobs there. Uh, <laughs> he'll, he'll, he'll make he it international. <laughs> he'll make it international and create the England Patriots. Oh, man, we're giving Robert Kraft way too much attention. All right, guys. All right, let's go ahead and move forward, guys. So uh, much editing. I know. I'm <laughs> not bad. Edit so much. <laughs> So let's move on to gaming. Uh, so pew, 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 pew. game over. I think, which is a very sad thing, uh, happened uh, during gaming. Lowe's cried. Uh, I know he did. Um, so Reggie, uh, Reggie from Nintendo. Reggie uh, feels me. Retired. He did. He retired. He retired uh, after 14 years with Nintendo. Uh, this guy has been a pioneer for Nintendo of America. Uh, yeah. Has helped lead um, a bunch of console launches. Has basically steered them the right way. Uh, yeah, because look where they are now. Yeah, with the Switch. Um, it's basically the perfect time for him to leave because they're in the middle of this console cycle for the Switch. And he leads them basically... In a good spot. In a great spot, you know. And yeah. He doesn't have to go into the next console launch and start revving up that. And he's done his job for the Switch. So he's even right in the middle of that. Um Leaving Nintendo in good hands with uh, Doug Bowser. Who's well, been we the don't know of... if he left it in good hands. We'll find That's out. That's true. But, I mean, from what I've seen of Doug Bowser, he has been a, a, pub, a public figure uh, for the last couple of years. Well, they've been years. pushing him. They've been pushing him. And it's it looks like they've been planning this for a while. Uh, and uh, Doug Bowser has been head of marketing, and Switch marketing was really good. I don't know if you you saw the commercials and how they... No, like... no, I've seen it. The uh, give, give credit where credit's due. The promotion on the Switch... Is great. Yeah. The way they promoted it, the way they came out. Um, he this, Reggie's leaving Nintendo in a great position because honestly, let's be real, folks. Right now, they're the leading in, in games as far as uh, handheld console uh, that you can take anywhere, and not only is it for adults but for kids as well. Uh, so you know that type of leaving Nintendo where it's at at, at a power because they were not a powerhouse. Now they're a powerhouse. Well, they were a powerhouse with the Wii, no. and then um, you. The reason I know they're not is because Xbox, uh, Xbox stayed the same. Uh, the Wii did not. They had to come out with the the the, the Wii U. And they, mm. they, had, they they saw that fade. Well, the like, Wii was overpowered, and everybody started noticing it. But the console still sold 111 million yeah, consoles. I mean, That's second place all time to PS2. So, it was a powerhouse. Um, but whatever, Reggie, um, man, uh, he's been great for Nintendo. Uh, he really has. A great public figure, always out uh, announcing uh, part of the announcements. He's always, uh, the community has embraced him. He's been, you know, a lot of his quotes have become memes. Um, you know, the, the Nintendo community really loved him. And he, you could tell that he, he loved the Nintendo community. Yeah, back. you can really tell that. And so, you know, it, it sucks to see someone go that you know cared. Uh, and those and you are, know what? yeah, he, he really did care. He yeah. Really so those care. are like the, you know, the, the leaders that you want leading your favorite companies and, you know, Nintendo being mine. Those are the kind of people that I want. Well, we'll see you know what the director does because I mean, he has games coming out. Uh, uh he, um, you know, you, you got Metroid, uh, which people are still hyped up about. You got Mortal Kombat that's going to come out. Um, it's also going to be for the switch. Uh, uh, Fire like, Emblem, Fire Emblem, Animal Crossing, Animal, uh, Pokemon, Pokemon. Yeah. yeah so I mean, they, they got uh, the a Switch is set up for success and for a huge year. Uh, Doug Bowser just kind of has to finish that. That yeah. that you got to be a dumbass. And I'm pretty yeah. sure they already set up. They already set up a plan for him, so he won't. Stress yeah. No. And and uh, Reggie's not leaving till April, so it's still a couple of months, and he's transitioning. Uh, you know the everybody the, the every the position everything everybody into it. So he's not out yet, but you know, uh, Doug is now being molded into that position as we speak. So we'll see. I'm excited though. You know, uh, uh, when these changes happen, yeah. I, you know, it, I I hope it's for the best and all the best to Reggie. Thank you for all your commitment. Uh, I love you. Um, work hard. Yeah, work hard. Uh, as I said before, he left Nintendo. In a, in a better position than they were at before. So we'll um, see what happens. But yeah, uh, so Rainbow Six has uh, come out with a new uh, season. 
and announced all their the the details for their new season. Um, uh, Burnt Horizon, I think is what it's called. Um, looks pretty cool. Uh, two new operators coming and a new map. Um, one of the uh, Muzzle is one of the operators. He freaking can. Uh, he's in a a defender who can capture the attacker's drones. Uh, the defender is an operator that. Oh no, the attacker. I forget her name, is an operator that sets traps against roaming defenders. So a lot of X and O's being added to the game. Uh, pretty exciting. Uh, it should be releasing in the next couple of weeks. Right now it's in the test phase with PC. So people are already digging in and, and trying out the operators, and it looks pretty cool. Uh, but, yeah, in the next couple of weeks it should be releasing to all the, new op uh, all the systems. Uh, I will be streaming the new season. I cannot wait. Uh, me and uh, my new squad that I've joined uh, for PS4, uh, Rainbow Six, uh, we're prepping, we're practicing because we want to jump into ranked as soon as we can and try to see what, what the game can bring. Uh, but yeah, uh, we'll be... Uh it's the start of year four. They laid out a plan, so we're gonna see a lot, a lot of operators come up in the next year, uh, from all over the country. They're putting operators from, uh, I man, just I forget the countries, but it's like really diverse. Like it's gonna be the most diverse year of Rainbow Six Siege, and I'm really excited for it. Uh, have you ever thought of jumping in on Xbox? Uh, Rainbow Siege. I seen you play. Mm, not mine. Not all my right. Forte. All right. Uh, and Anthem came out with a new patch. Yeah, so I want to talk about this. So, <clears throat> Anthem came out with a new patch. Uh, everybody's been complaining about how there's been a lot of loading screens, how their hub is the most trashiest hub that they've ever seen in their life, uh, how the weapon system and the upgradable system and the skin system is just plain stupid, uh, how you have to grind for a whole month just to get one normal skin. Uh, you can't even get a rare skin or... It's it's crazy. Uh, so they they released a patch, and from um, what Elias informed me, is has any of the loading screen changed at all? Hey Eli Elias, uh, our resident anthem expert. Let's get him up here to talk yeah. about uh, anthem. Yeah. Let, let, he, he'll be able to tell us about what actually is going on with the patch. Yeah. What's up? So, so uh, how's the, the patch? how's the loading screens? The loading screens uh, upgraded better. Uh, well, the the game fully released on Friday the, on the twenty second. Mm -hmm. uh, so everybody has been able to play it. On that day, they had a big patch come out to fix some major issues. Which one of them was the loading screens, because there's a lot of loading in this game. Like when supposedly they were supposed to be advertised as like there's no loading. Like, yeah, which is really bad on their part. But um, yeah, they fixed some of the issues, but like. I've been hearing like in other like forms, um, there this game the way it is now is probably not going to be the same within a couple of months. Uh, I, I do expect a lot of changes, but not changes to the core. Like in terms of like whenever you're in the HUD, like walking around, getting story mission stuff. Um, that's probably going to stay the same. But what's going to be different is probably how they set up everything within like the game, like the economy in the game. Yeah, that's, the, why, that's why I heard a lot of grinding people. The, grind. But it's a looter shooter. I mean, that's what you expect. I mean, you're supposed to go out there and play like hours and collect. And I and mean, that's a, that's his bread and butter. And for skins, is it still $8? I don't remember. I think the last time I checked, they were like eleven bucks or something like 11 that. Eleven bucks, mm -hmm. and they're not—they're not even like the super rare ones. Those are just like skins. I mean, the the skins—they have a storefront for the skins on on the game, and mm -hmm. they they interchange like I think either every week or every day. I mm -hmm. forget. But I mean, the like again, as always, the gameplay is fun whenever you're actually in the suit, and. I'm gonna continue playing it, hoping it gets better. Cause I, I do. I mean, it has a lot of promise, but yeah, it's just there's a lot of issues as well. The the, the, the reason why I'm saying this is because I I had pre-ordered the game. Uh, at the time, uh, I didn't have uh, the ability to go and get it, uh, but I was like, you know what? I'll just wait to see if everything you know everything pops up good. Well, looking at reviews and and seeing people play it, uh, it's been shitted on. Uh, people have literally mocked it. Uh, they were like, what the hell is Bioware doing? Like, we thought Bioware B team was trash. Like, Bio what the hell's wrong with uh, Bioware A team? Uh, you know, it just goes to show you that their leadership issues in Bioware, this game was incomplete. And looking at, at, at gameplay, um, the Javelin world out there, when you're in the Javelin, it looks amazing. It really does look amazing. Uh, but the way they have set up from what I saw... 
uh, the the way they have set up their their armors and the way they have their set up when you get out of your armor is super boring. There is no character. There is no, everything's boring. Like everything is just rep- repetitive. You don't you make deci- uh, you make decisions and those decisions don't even affect nothing in the gameplay. Uh, so I don't even know why they're in there. If that then it's not gonna do anything. Uh, it's just a very bad game all around. As Elias said, there is promise there. Uh, but those patches are going to have to come, and it's going to come during time. It's going to basically be like Destiny 1. Where Destiny 1, actually, I think was probably better. Uh, not with review or what? No, <laughs> no, not the review. But like, I'm just saying, it, it's, it's, it, it, people have been bitching about it all fucking week. It's bad. Bioware, they're going to have to do some some PR work on this well, shit. Supposedly, the other thing is, too, is that EA pushed them to release a game early because they, they want to get it out already. But see, then, why did you even join EA to begin with? <laughs> Because they have a lot of money. It's the same reason, same reason that Bungie uh, signed up with Activision because of all the money they were offering to help. It, it's just bad. Like when you push, I, I wanted it. Okay, they pushed it back a year. Remember, they pushed Anthem they, back a year. They delayed it, really. and they could have delayed it more. I honestly feel like you would have got a better rep up against Animal Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I honestly feel like Animal Crossing. Uh, there's so many more fans right now of that game than there are of Anthem. Like people are trying to find oh, hope. A new IP. <laughs> uh, yeah. People are trying to find hope in that IP, and and they're just getting frustrated. Uh, once again, no, I mean, I think, uh, yeah, Anthem has a lot of work to go uh, left in it, but as you see in a lot of these games, it's a you know it's a service game. It's a it, it's gonna get updates. It's gonna get more content as it goes. So yeah. Are, are we, you know, That's why I gonna so yeah, was it released a little bit early? I think so. But, you know, um, do I think it's going to be a bad game? Are, are we going to be talking about it the same way at the end of this year? No, I think they're going to fix everything. I'm one of those people that if once they if, fix everything, I'll buy it. <laughs> exactly. Maybe I'm away. I'm a, I'm a wait and see. I'm not shitting on Bioware yet. I'm a wait, let them. Oh, I'm shitting on Bioware. <clears throat> Bioware fucked up Mass Effect horribly. I mean, they fucked up Mass Effect 3. That ending was the most stupidest ending I've ever seen in my life. Every decision that I made to the past three games didn't make no sense at the end. Not only that, they messed up the new Mass Effect by giving it to the B team. And that's what we thought, that because they gave it to the B team. And now they come out with Anthem after pushing, promoting, pulling back a year. And you mean to tell me they come out with an incomplete game? That's not fair to us gamers. That's not fair for us that spend money on it. And they, these, no wonder they're promoting these DLCs as free because they're part of the fucking game that should have been released. <laughs> well, morons. I mean, and you have, but see, then you got to, you got to, just as you made points before, don't buy games. Like, don't put, don't. Speak with your money. And so us not buying the game right now is speaking with our money. We're not going to buy an incomplete game. Maybe they fix it down the road. Yeah, for the people that bought it now, man, some of, I've heard a lot of them are happy with what the game is right now. Um, so, hey, man, that they're you know people are speaking with their wallets. So you yeah. know that's all you can do. If you don't agree with it, just don't buy it. And if you don't yeah. feel like down the road they fix it, don't buy it then. Yeah. I'm doing that. I, I, I waited around. Me too. And all right, luckily I so. waited around because I was gonna buy it. But you know what, guys? What I, are you What are you playing right now? Uh, oh, I'm playing the game of the year, Resident Evil Two. I am still playing it over and over and over and over again. Up over and over and over. Yeah, again. I'm, I keep playing. I already game of the it year. two or three times. It's the game of the year right now. Um, so that's what I've been playing. Uh, I've been trying to find different. Me- uh, well, whatever. Point is, uh, that's the game of the year for me. Uh, Anthem needs a lot of work. Uh, we as gamers have the ability to 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 change this, but we have not. Uh, moving forward, just two real quick, two things that have occurred. Um, uh, well, uh, you, you on Anthem? No, yeah, but I think we got we time. What, what, what did you see? Oh, I was gonna say because Resident Evil Three, um, Resident Evil Two came out, and like the people that made it, they sent out a survey to see how we thought about uh, Resident Evil Two to see so if they can do a Resident Evil Three. That's that's not a story. That's not- Oh, okay. Well, all right. Well, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. So much edits. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, we'll, we'll get the hang of it. It's my second time hosting this way. Uh, we'll get the hang of it. And uh, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe down below. Uh, ring the bell. You already know. Uh, Public Enemy 59 on PS4 and Xbox One, right?
Uh, Public Enemy 059 on oh Xbox One. Uh, Twitch, Public Enemy 59. YouTube, Public Enemy 59. Your mom, Public Enemy 59. <laughs> Thank you. Links are 101 on Xbox uh, One. Thank you guys for watching. Please keep watching us as we try to get you the most content as possible. Twitter, Public Enemy 59. Uh,